Assalamu alaikum. Today, inshallah ta'ala, I will discuss a little bit about the four Qul surahs and how all of them are connected to Surah Al-Fatiha through their central meaning. Starting from Surah Al-Ikhlas. Surah Ikhlas actually deals with Tawheed. It helps us understand our Creator. Narrations are there that this surah was revealed when our Prophet Muhammad was asked regarding the attributes of our God. It actually mentions four attributes or characteristics of God. Say, He is Allah, who is one and only. Allah, the eternal refuge, means He is independent of all and everyone and everything are dependent on Him. He neither begets, nor is he born, means neither he has an offspring, nor is he the offspring of anyone, means there is no lineage, nor is there to him any equivalent, means none is equal with him in rank. Moving to Surah Al-Kafirun, Surah Kafirun actually protects us from shirk. In order to understand this, we need to understand the pre-Quranic situation of Makkah. The Arabs of that time used to believe in Allah, but they also worshipped idols or false gods beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah az zukhruf ayat 87, it has been said that, if you ask them, means the pre-Islamic Arabs, who created them, they would surely respond, Allah. Surah al ankabut Ayat 61 mentions, if you ask the pagans who created the heavens and the earth and subjected the sun and the moon, they would surely respond, Allah. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Ayat 84 to 89, it is mentioned that when they were asked, to whom belongs the earth and whoever dwells in it, who is the Lord of the seven heavens and the Lord of the great throne, they used to respond, all belongs to Allah. So, when they were asked, then why do you worship other false gods beside Allah, they would respond that they did so in order to get closer to Allah and take them as their intercessors. Even now, people are there who consider themselves to be so sinful that they feel ashamed to reach out to Allah, so they try to consider another holy person, idol, etc. to act as their intercessors to Allah which should not be the case in accordance to Islam. So, Muhammad sallallahu didn't introduce them to a completely new God. They already considered Allah to be their principle of all gods. The only new message that he preached was, do not worship any other God beside Allah. If anyone claims to worship Allah, but also raises any other entity to the level that is considered as worship, this will result in committing the greatest crime in Islam, which is known as shirk. With Surah Kafirun, a strong message is delivered that if shirk is done, the person is no longer considered to be worshipping Allah, even if he claims to worship Allah by his name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must be worshipped alone with utmost purity in Tawheed, that is the oneness in Allah. Taking all of this into consideration, with the help of both of the surahs, the concept of God becomes crystal clear to us, and the importance of Tawheed and the danger of Shirk becomes apparent to us. Both of the surahs together are called as Ikhlasain, which brings about the complete purity of faith. Now, let's have a look at Surah Al-Falaq. This surah protects us from any kind of physical and psychological harms that affects our life in this world. With this surah, we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from all sort of worldly harms. And if we look into the meaning of surah An-Nas, the meaning of this surah centrally deals in seeking refuge in Allah to protect us from the whispers of shaitan. Such protection from the evil whisperings helps with spiritual protection. Spiritual harm primarily affects our hereafter and if we can save ourselves from spiritual harms, we might end up protecting ourselves from the hellfire as well. So, with the combination of both of these surahs, which are combinedly called as the Mu'addatain, we are protected physically, psychologically, as well as spiritually, 
and thus we are saved in this world and also in the hereafter. Finally, let's consider how can we tie all of these surahs with Surah Al-Fatiha. This surah starts with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then in the central part of the surah we say we worship you and we need your help. What is that help? Right after this ayat, we make our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path. Allah's help and guidance is the most crucial requirement to us. We cannot live and protect ourselves without the help of Allah as we are given free will, so we need guidance to act in the best way in this life. We also need right guidance to save ourselves in the true justice of the judgment day and also get the best in the hereafter. Now, let's see how this surah centrally relates to four old surahs. We need guidance to correctly understand Tawheed and Ikhlas. We need guidance to protect ourselves from shirk. We need help to protect ourselves physically and psychologically in this life. And finally, we need guidance and help to protect ourselves from the whispers of the shaitan and any misguidance that might destroy our hereafter. So, Surah Fatiha covers all of these issues. Thank you. Hope you like this video. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks.